I flipped 50 rocks to see what was living under them. A lot of animals live under rocks because it stays at a consistent temperature and humidity and provides them protection from predators. To increase my chances of finding something cool, I went to two different locations. The first of which was this small creek in the middle of the woods. Here's what I found. Under the very first rock I flipped, I found a salamander, but it must have been pretty camera shy because it immediately ran into the weeds. I was looking very intensely for it when it tried to attack me. This is a dusky salamander, not bad for a very first flip. Under the next rock, I found another dusky salamander, but this one took a swim as soon as I found it. And then I found nothing, nothing, and then nothing, and then some more nothing, and nothing. But under the 10th rock, I flipped a northern two-line salamander. Their name comes from the two black lines that runs down either side of their body. And of course, I put the rock back very carefully. Under the next rock, there was another dusky salamander. These guys are very common here. And this one was just chilling on the rock under it. See you, guy. Under the 12th rock, there was nothing. In general, it's not a good idea to handle amphibians because they have very sensitive skin. And most of these salamanders I'm finding today belong to the family Plethodontidae, which means they don't have any lungs and they breathe through their skin, which is another reason why you really shouldn't be handling them. But my hands are wet, so I decided it was safe to handle this guy. But I definitely struggled to pick him up. This was another dusky salamander, and I accidentally caught a small crayfish along with it. As you can see, my hands are very wet and muddy, so I'm not too worried about my oils leaking into their skin. And off it goes. At rock 14, I was having a dry spell, and I was finding a whole lot of nothing. While I wasn't finding any cool animals, I did find this beautiful trillium on the string bank. So cool. Rock 20 and 21 both have the same thing under it. Absolutely nothing. If you ever go out flipping rocks like me, make sure you're very careful and put the rock back exactly how you found it. Under rock 23, there was another dusky salamander. There's so many of these around here. Still very cool. Under 24, I found this little baby crayfish, which was pretty cool and refreshing to see. And under rock 25, there was nothing. For the next 25 rocks, I moved into a more forested area away from the stream, but I ended up flipping a few down in the stream as well. Under rock 26, there was one of the most common salamanders to find in eastern North America, the redback salamander. I wasn't a fan of 27 because it was a bunch of ants. The rock after that had absolutely nothing, but the one right next to it had a snake. So I picked it up. This is a completely harmless ring neck snake. They are technically venomous, but their venom only affects their prey. And the subspecies around me is bad at being a venomous snake because it doesn't even have fangs. This is one of the most chill species of snakes. I've never been bitten by one. I held this guy for about a minute, but then I put him right back where I found him. Rock 30 was another dud. Under 31, there was a two-line salamander that ran as soon as it saw me. From 32 to 44, I found nothing. But under 45, I found this really cool slimy salamander. Their name comes from the slime that they produce to keep predators from eating them. This has got to be one of my favorites to find. Under rock 46, I found what I think is an eastern red centipede. I also came across this deer on the path, and it didn't even care that I was right by it. Under rock 47, there was more ants. There's a whole colony under here. Rock 48 had a dusky salamander. I had this mini flip so I could get a closer look. I found this one right along the stream bank. Rock 49 produced another northern two lion salamander. And under rock 50, there was a northern two lion salamander. 